Welcome back to Chatter on the Wire. This week we're going to take a look at some breakout boards for the Atomic Pi. Um, we'll see here how this works out. I am using the audio on the camera that I stole, is that the proper term, for my wife. Um, talk about that more in the video that's upcoming here. But it appeared to actually pick up audio quite well. Uh, if there's any places that I really need to touch up, I will do that around or throughout the upcoming one. Uh, this nice new microphone that I have was just having problems with it because I have uh, VMware running in the background and of course as soon as the new USB device came on or got plugged in it's like hey do you want me to take care of this so it took me an extra 30 seconds of beating my head on the table trying to figure out what was going on and why my brand new mic wasn't working it's just been one of those days so bear with me and we'll get this video out here quickly and if you're like me, you'll be listening to it at 1.5 or 2x speed. But there is a few useful pieces in here for those of you who are looking at the breakout boards instead of wiring up your own power supply. So stick with me and hopefully you enjoy. Thanks. So real quick, before we jump into the breakout boards, uh, we're going to take a look at the setup for how I actually recorded this week's session. This week, Great Scott did a video on... Uh, mounting your camera up above your work table so you could do different uh, videos. He had it in the back of it where he had a screen that he bought specifically for it. I'll do a link to his video. While I didn't use really any of that, it did actually give me the idea to take my wife's camera that I stole, drilled a hole in the little metal frame here, and dropped a screw right in the back there to hold it in place. So we'll see how well this works for me long term, but I did want to shoot a few videos this week with, with it uh, while she's gone. So we'll see how this works long term and whether it works out well for us on this type of video in the future. So uh, back to the Atomic Pi. My new adapters came in this week. And go ahead and see about zooming out here a little. See if I can do this without blurring things too much. bring this back here in a sec. So the mini adapter, power adapter, um, what did I end up paying for this thing? Um, so the mini adapter was $395 from Ameridroid and the large breakout board which we'll look at here in a sec is $16 and then on top of that I had to pay $5.43 for shipping so total for me 2533 for these two adapters. Uh, little by little here, uh, as you can probably guess, this $35 computer has got more expensive uh, constantly. Anyways, the mini adapter appears to probably be the way to go for most people. Unless you really need that breakout board for four bucks. I think this is one of those must have type things. Um, the LEDs are not all that square on here. Let's see if we can zoom in on this. And let's see if I can focus since this doesn't do autofocus. But as you can see here, this guy right here is completely off center. Not going to make any difference in the grander scheme of things of this working. But looks like we have a few resistors. Um, 4 amp uh, device back here and then it does show, I guess you do have the very minor if you wanted to put some uh, pins on the back of this you could actually get receive, transmit, GPIO 3, 4, 7, ground, transmit and receive GPIO 0, 1, and 2 here. So for some people that might actually be worthwhile um, I will go ahead and solder up are um, some pins on that here one of these days. It will not be today. I just wanted to actually grab this here real quick and take a look at what came in. These actually showed up yesterday and I wanted to get this video out as quick as possible for those that are still looking for different pieces and parts here. Okay.
you will notice over here I did go ahead and mark positive and negative so if I went back to these adapters I could remember which side was which but the odds are of me using this in the future are probably pretty minimal now that I have these uh, breakout boards. They do. Lock tight these in there. Sheesh. Oh, sure. The wrong one comes out. Sheesh. Remind me not to have them work on my stuff in the future. Granted, they did send us nice brass ones here instead of what I would have used, which would be the cheap plastic ones. The one nice thing is, let's zoom back in here a little, bring this over. So, they do have, let's see if I can get that, little tab right here. So, even if you were being a moron, you really couldn't put this on backwards. And on top of that, it does all line up. So, let's see here, try to zoom, focus that a little better. You do notice that these are perfectly lined up, so I'll go ahead and throw the screws in there real quick. And hopefully I remember to speed most of this up because I know this is not going to be extremely uh, entertaining. Now I got that figured out, we're going to switch these over to the longer ones. Wow. Okay, so plastic feet into brass connections to the other brass connector. Get some legs for the other side that'll be the same length. Hopefully, make sure. Yeah, that's not the right one. Or did I put the wrong one on the last one? Yeah, I put the wrong one on the last one. When you set things aside, you should actually use them. I found that using these are easier than using the nuts that come with it. A little more to grab on here and don't have to grab a set of pliers specifically for it. Okay, so in theory this should sit close to level at least. Some of these longer ones because it doesn't really matter. And now it's taken 10 minutes to get to something that should take about 30 seconds in real life. Oh wait, this was real life. Okay. So at this point, we have a simple little power adapter there. If we want, we can turn around and throw the pins in here, solder those on the back side, and have direct access to all those different GPIOs. Um, if I'm going to do that, I will probably use some right angle ones to come up and go straight over so that I don't have to raise this even higher. Uh, we will turn around and power this up here in the next video. Um, I'm going to go ahead before that.
Okay, so in the last video, we looked at the mini breakout board, and for the life of me, this will not focus on those words, so we'll call that good. Um, this one will take a look at the larger breakout board, and as you can see, there are a ton of different areas here if you want to do prototyping. I will leave that to someone else to look into that too much. Um, but you can see that this is going to fit on there. I'm not going to clip this down just yet. There is nice connectors here all lined up along there. And then if you've used those, then you should be able to use some of these uh, screw-in terminals on the side to pull things out or specifically over here on this side you should be able to use that. But before we do that, let's go ahead and relook at the, this real quick. Talked about this a little in the last video. Uh, there is the Arduino Nano uh, spot here. Let me see if I can grab one from the shelf right above me. Should have grabbed this before, but sorry. Again, like always, you get what you get. So if we were to put this in here, it lines up nicely and in theory should drop down in. Um, I personally wouldn't end up putting it that way. Um, I'd most likely try to put a uh, set of the standoffs so I get this back out. The problem I think would, that would happen there, and especially with this one here, with these pins sticking up right here, is yeah, that's going to get in the way. So you'd have to be selective on the nanos you use or make sure you have not already put these extra pins on the back end here um, and I'm going to guess that most people actually have those in so um, while it would work for that and it's a cool concept for those who may be interested in tying a nano into this I think this is more just a stab in the dark trying to catch a few more people um, if you really are interested in that I think you probably would have better ways of doing that So, we drop this in here. This one's a little harder to line up, even though it's, it would seem like it should be easier, just because you're putting this in on, a little on the blind side, which also makes me nervous about what it's going to be like to remove this afterwards. One of those pins bent, or what's the deal here? Okay. So we won't put screws in, but it looks like all those screws line up nicely. We can see here there is not a lot of room there to put a nano in and drop pins through because if we were to put that in there all the way down, we'd have to clip off all of those pins after the fact uh, or these feet would not actually work for us. Um, probably not the end of the world if those feet don't work for you, but something to keep in mind. Um, it doesn't change the footprint of the board by much and for those that want direct access to all these screw terminals it actually probably wouldn't be a bad thing because you got this one I assume is here, this one for that one all your extra GPIO pins from over here are going to be shoved out to these you have a power adapter I'm assuming this is for, can be for, used for power in uh, I haven't actually looked at that yet you can also bring power in over here. Uh, this would be a little easier than some of the others. USB 2, you still have access. Wow, sorry about the focus here, people. You would still have access to your USB 3 and your networking here. And from what I gathered in explaining computers earlier today, and I think other people have talked about too, this connection here is actually just a USB 2. So this is just extending this connection out here over to this USB 2. So it's not anything extremely special that they're doing there. A few more connections here, expanding these out. That doesn't actually do anything with these two connectors. So I don't know it, how those are actually being used. Um, but they are definitely not being expanded out into the new uh, expansion board here. Anyways. Here throughout the course of this next week, I will try to do some tests on this. I want to put a few old OS's on this. I have, still have things like BOS and I don't know what else sitting around. XP, 
uh, maybe bring up some of my old games or something like that and see how this runs it. Should be good. I mean, it's an Intel based processor, a lot better than what we used to have back in the XP days. Okay, let's take a look a little closer actually at the breakout board here. Try to zoom out and get this all on the screen. And we'll take a look at this board a little closer. So we do have, I assume, uh, we can bring power in either from a normal power supply through here or through the pinouts here. This might be a little nicer here. Um, talked about this before, but here you have USB 2, which is just actually being fed through this cable uh, straight off of the board, so nothing special on this one. Um, don't know why we would need a ground over here, but they've made it accessible. There are a few different jumpers here. Um, there is, and I'll put the, I'll have to go back and add this into my other video. There is a jumper on the small breakout board as well, and as far as I know, there's no documentation on this. At least they didn't ship me anything specifically there. Um, what is nice here is there is a IC2 uh, serial to USB here. So if you hook up to your little USB connection right here, um, we should actually see this whole device as a USB one. Um, that does come in useful at uh, some points in time. Uh, pinouts here are for UART. These over here are supposedly for volume. Um, I've heard people talk about problems with that, not something specifically I've looked into at all. Uh, it is interesting that on this breakout here, they do go ahead and break out 3.3 volts. Uh, quite a few different ground sections here. Uh, 5 volt, ground again, and another 5 volt. So this prototyping area gives you a lot of space, but again, this isn't much clearance between the bottom of the board here and this prototyping area. So this is really going to be hard to use, I think, for most people, um, but it's there for that select few. Um, there's another little jumper here, specifically for Arduino power select, and I guess that would be semi-useful if you're throwing an Arduino here and want to get it powered up. Uh, I assume just jump straight across that and uh, it will actually send power to it. One of those things where I personally really don't see a use for this, but it is going to be useful for a few people here or there. Um, a few different power LEDs, uh, you know, if the GPIOs are being used or power here. Anyways, uh, we'll do a few tests with both this breakout board and the other. So, in reviewing the large breakout board, um, I did notice something on this one that I hadn't before which is a little jumper right here. There is no documentation on what this jumper does. Uh, this one was set. All the jumpers on the larger breakout board, there is no jumper across it. So uh, I might play around with the pinout here and do some testing and see what that jumper is for. I will also kind of jump on the forums and see if there's any documentation on that. So for me, these breakout boards both have their own uses. I will probably be using the smaller one most of the time. I might end up using that larger one, but overall I don't know that I'm going to find a ton of use for it, but I am glad I have it. I hope you found something useful in this. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. Check out my other videos on the Atomic Pie, or if you happen to find this from melting uh, videos, give me a thumbs up on those. Those are actually what I enjoy a lot more, but the Atomic Pie has been what has brought most people to my new channel. So thanks for watching and let me know what you want to see in the future.